My name is Victor DiNovo, I'm a scientist. The story I'm about to tell you, it begins 29 years ago. I got a phone call from a guy named Bill Dunn. He said, I have a job for you. He said, I work for Philip Morris and we make cigarettes. We got a problem. 138,000 people will have heart attacks and brain strokes every year caused by nicotine. You guys make a product that you know kills people? He said, no, 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 we don't kill anybody. Nicotine does, but we have a program. Philip Morris recognized that it was in their interest to find products that killed less people. Dead people don't buy cigarettes. To a scientist, that's a dream. You get to do a job that actually might make a difference. I proposed a design to the company, a cigarette that had tobacco, but no nicotine. Our drug would be in there, but no heart disease. But there was a catch. They were also doing research to make more addictive products. When the two worlds collided, less harmful or more addictive, they chose more addictive. When you go to work for Philip Morris, you sign a secrecy agreement for the rest of your life. You're not allowed to divulge what you did there. Imagine 50 years of the secrets of an industry that had kept secrets better than any industry. If I resisted these guys, they could ruin my career. But if I didn't resist them, what's my career worth? Victor DeNoble was the first whistleblower. It was nothing like we'd ever seen. It's a huge story. Huge, huge, huge. It changed the debate on tobacco, and it opened the floodgates of attacks on the tobacco industry. They came to our houses, set up surveillance, took photographs of me in front of my front lawn, playing with my kids. They both unbuttoned their jackets. I could see a holster. My heart just stopped. They weren't interested in science. They were interested in threatening me. There were TV, media people everywhere. There was no turning back. But it was not going to stop the tidal wave that was about to hit the tobacco industry.